Cobbs here again. Uh, we're continuing our lectures on brain tumors for braincancer.org. One of the most critical markers of a glioblastoma in terms of cellular markers that we get after the diagnosis and looking at the pathology is related to something that's quite confusing even for clinicians and it's called MGMT methylation. And most patients with glioblastoma will have their tumor analyzed for MGMT methylation status. This is quite confusing, so I'm going to try to take you through this and explain it in a way that hopefully will make sense. So why do we worry about MGMT methylation status? Well, this goes back to 2005 when a paper in the New England Journal was published that showed that temozolomide can improve survival for glioblastoma in patients who had radiation only versus patients who had temozolomide with radiation and then subsequent temozolomide. Uh, this was a paper um, by Dr. Stoop, S-T-U-P-P, and in this paper they showed that the median survival for glioblastoma went from something like 12 months or 13 months to something like 15 months. So it's not a massive breakthrough yet it became the standard of care and when they analyzed the patients in a subsequent article in the same New England Journal uh, they found that there is a enzyme or molecule that some of the tumors express that may make all the difference in terms of whether temozolomide works or not. So let's just look at what happens if you have a glioblastoma and you plot out survival on a Kaplan-Meier survival curve. This is 100% of patients alive at the time of diagnosis and this is survival in one year, two year, three years. Unfortunately, we know that 50% of patients will pass sometime after a year, somewhere around 1.1 years, 14 months. If patients have MGMT methylation at their tumor, that survival curve shifts significantly to longer survival, not only at one year, but at two years and three years. What percentage of patients have MGMT methylation? Well, unfortunately, if you take all comers of glioblastoma, about a third of patients have MGMT methylation, which gives them a better prognosis. So what is the basis of the interaction between temozolomide and MGMT methylation? <clears throat> well, most chemotherapeutic drugs that we have now work by causing DNA damage. We know that cells that are rapidly dividing, like cancer cells, have to, like a zipper, create a strand of DNA, copy that strand, it pulls apart, those strands make another copy when another cell divides. So you can see a cell that is rapidly dividing is going to be very sensitive to anything that's going to mess up its DNA. Whereas the same thing is not going to cause any problems to a cell that's not dividing. Hence the ability of a chemo drug that damages DNA to have a partial effect or a much more uh, uh, serious effect on a cancer cell than a normal cell. So if we look at DNA, <clears throat> we know that DNA is a double-stranded chain like this, double helix, and each of these components is a base of DNA, and we have C, T, A, and G. And G stands for guanine, and these form cross-links, right? <clears throat> Temozolomide is a drug, if we just do it in a straight fashion, let's say we got C, T, A, G, A, dot, dot, dot. Temozolomide is a chemical that puts onto this guanine a molecule that binds to the guanine 
And if that molecule is not removed, then the next time this strand of DNA is attempted to be copied, if that makes sense, this will cause interference with the ability of the cell to make the other strand. That will send this DNA into a downhill spiral, which will cause the whole system to break down, and that will initiate other processes that cause that cell to shrivel up and die by a process called apoptosis. So, if this chemo drug is to work, this molecule has to stay on here and cause that DNA strand to have a DNA break that cannot be repaired. That's how Temozolomide works.